We really wanted to bring you a review of Young Souls, but unfortunately, we were just so busy last week. But thankfully, Asdin of Grinning Wolf Games, and also writer of Switch Up, came through in a pinch and has written this one for us. Some games pique your interest the second you see the cover art. The Nintendo Switch is neither lacking great beat em ups or indie games, yet still it manages to catch the eye. Combining some gorgeous animations, light RPG mechanics, and an engrossing story, does this game have the right amount of soul, or is it the beat em up genre getting old? In the worst possible way. A massive thanks to the arcade crew for the review copy. Now, let's find out. Jen and Tristan are two teenagers who find themselves suddenly abandoned and without a family until a good-hearted scientist adopts and brings them into his home to settle within a small ports town. Life here, however, proves uneventful. Uneventful, that is, until they uncover a portal to another world which threatens the very existence of life on Earth. That'll certainly do it. Penned by Matthew Ritter, the story is full of relatable teenage affairs, with the twins interacting with one another, as well as with the inhabitants of this sleepy town. From the very first couple of minutes playing, the story already captures your attention by throwing in some of the siblings' more immature banter and personalities, but in a way so as to endear you to them rather than put you off. The same can be said for the townsfolk. The more you interact with them, the more life is weaved into the narrative. Without going into too much detail, the game has some profanity and more adult humour, which along with a superb animation and art style, help immerse you into the world. In many ways, this is quite reminiscent to 80s classic movies such as The Goonies or the more contemporary Netflix series Stranger Things. Jen and Tristan will slowly unveil that not everything in this town is as it seems, and during the 12 hours it took me to complete the game, I was engaged by the town, the goblin world, and all of the events that transpired. Now, this is a side-scrolling beat-em-up game with role-playing, dungeon crawling, and leveling up mixed in. It will see you controlling both siblings, either via offline co-op or single player, and if you've played the original original Donkey Kong Country games, where you can swap out between the protagonists, then this will seem like a very familiar mechanic. Its implementation is almost identical. Now, there are no unique attributes or skills that set the twins apart, and they both share the same levelling up progression. While that might sound like a missed opportunity, the sheer variety of specific upgradable equipment and weapons can really make them unique through your own choices. Not to mention, the ability to go to the gym and focus on increasing a specific stat means that once again it's up to you whether you want one more nimble and the other to be the tank, or if you'd rather they both pushed into a similar area. The role-playing mechanics are mainly focused on allocating skill points to either of your three stats. This is done via a workout session, as stated earlier, and the gathering of resources to improve the aforementioned equipment. The gold and dollars collected can be used to purchase clothing, which will offer a cosmetic upgrade or magic sneakers with specific skills, such as allowing one to find more gold coins. There are no real side quests, so to speak, which could have possibly added to the gameplay, but I personally enjoyed the experience as it was, with the twins buying clothes during the day and carrying out their quests deeper into the goblin's domain at night. As you'd expect from any RPG, there is a heavy emphasis on gear and items, and the emphasis is put on pushing deeper into the various biomes. Each one, however, However, works like a hub to different rooms and corridors known as zones. Some will require a key in order to push forward, which is usually rewarded after defeating a mini-boss, but the same keys have multiple purposes which will encourage players to return more than once to the same location. There aren't any maps to find per se, as the exploration undertaken will in itself create one for you. The corridors and rooms you encounter will have their own enemies, treasures, and recommended levels, and at the end of each zone you're likely to find treasure rooms a fitting reward for all your efforts. Now on to the combat in more detail. The twins will equip a melee weapon, an accessory and a set of armour. You can switch between them with the L shoulder button, however if you press Y at the same time they'll carry out a dual strike on the enemy. It's really helpful as the shockwave can assist with some crowd control and it's a mechanic very familiar if you're a beat em up fan. The combat mechanics are surprisingly deep and easy to understand. Enemy attacks can be parried and if you press the block button just as the enemy flashes pink that that's how you'll know you'll be successful. When you do this, the enemy will drop mana pearls that allow the player to carry out a special or magical attack, and these may be unique to the weapon. And although a subtle thing, for me this was one of the most endearing aspects of the game, as it allowed me, through my selections of gear and skills, to change the style of play, considerations for the weight of gear, the different statistics, and the types of enemies you fight must be made. Now, enemies are ruthless and will persistently attack you even when your character is knocked over from one. There are different difficulties and accessibility options which will allow you to refine how easy or hard 
hard it can be, but by default both characters have two lives each per zone. This means when one gets knocked out, the other has to resuscitate them before they completely die. Again, not a new mechanic, but one that's welcome and adds in that nice risk reward factor. As you'd expect, when they both die, you'll be shot back out of the portal and have to carry out that zone once again. Throw in a ton of different boss fights that have various attacks and skills and will require some genuine planning as well as tactical thinking to defeat and they've got a real recipe for success. The gameplay for me has all the best aspects of the side-scrolling beat-em-up genre but with the right amount of Metroidvania and RPG elements sprinkled in without them feeling forced. Add to it the humour and immaturity of the strong-willed snarky twins. Unfortunately though there are a number of performance issues which will discuss which can impede your experience. Overall for me as it stands I still give gameplay 16 out of 20 and the controls were great, they scored 18 out of 20. First up then with visuals and performance, and as mentioned, the performance has issues. You'll find a number of crashes to desktop, as well as some sporadic frame drops. This seems to be caused by just too many enemies on screen at one time. One issue is that when you press the minus button, it allows for the pair to swap out their gear, but the game would sometimes freeze slightly when bringing up the menus, and that could last up to 10 seconds. These might sound like massive issues, but it's a testament to how good the game is that I was still able to enjoy it through my playtime as much as I was. That being said, they will need to do some patches. Now, the world itself is beaming with pastel colours, cell shaded environments, which act as a beautiful backdrop to these cartoon characters. There are some awesome effects, such as when the twins pass through the portal and the world slides in. Another is the detail of some of the more animated assets in the background. Things like torch flames flickering or the fast forward VHS tape effect. It gives it the feel of an animated movie. Now, while the town is small and fairly empty at first glance, consisting of just one street spanning left to right, what is here is very detailed and full of charm. The devil is most certainly in the detail, such as how the mayor's secretary is constantly glued to her phone, and the different biomes, as well as the goblin market, give real character to the world, with darker and medieval themes contrasting with the world above. The dank dark dungeons, with its greens, blues and reds, really pops on that OLED screen in handheld mode. When playing in handheld mode, some of the text is okay. The bigger text is absolutely fine and readable, however there's smaller text which is absolutely minuscule. Once patched up, this would be an easy 18 out of 20, but with those few performance niggles in its current state, I think I'd go for 14 out of 20. The soundtrack is on point, with minimalist songs creating the suspense within the adventure, as well as the sound effects that cue the player of what evil awaits behind the big wooden door. The grunts of both protagonists and enemies when swinging their weapons and the satisfying sounds of these deflecting upon impact really add to the experience. I think it could have possibly benefited from some voice work and overall I give audio 17 out of 20. Priced at £22.49, €24.99 or €24.99 and with a download size of 4 gigs, there is a physical version which can be pre-ordered from the Signature Editions website with limited run games and Pix and Love also offering a collector's edition. It's an excellent and successful hybrid of genres, but some may feel that the price is a tad high, particularly when you consider some of those technical issues that are in this version. Played in co-op or alone, it is incredible fun though, and 12 to 14 hours for a beat-em-up, that's certainly a decent length. I give value 16 out of 20. To conclude, having grown up in the 90s, I was lucky enough to play some of the heavyweights of the genre. Those include Turtles in Time, Double Dragon and Golden Axe. And for developers to blend different game styles, there's always the risk that it can backfire. But it does feel like perhaps we're in the era of the beat-em-up renaissance. Young Souls has gained a seat with the greats, in my opinion, and I do hope they just patch up those few issues so that it doesn't take the shine off of what's a great experience.
it gets a very respectable switch up score of 81%. Once again, a big thanks to Asdin for writing this one. Let him know in the comments what you thought of it. I know that Young Souls is one that I was really interested in and now, annoyingly, I'm going to have to play it. <laughs> As if I've got enough time. Thanks to all of you that watch the channel and if you do buy this game, save 10% using code SWITCHUP over at our website, switchup.gg. Thanks to our patrons, you guys are awesome. And to, as a guy over on the Discord, one of our moderators called Foxitron and, and he's completely redesigned the Discord and he's done such a good job over there with, along with some of the other people like Cultured Bucket, the Suze. So yeah, go check it out. There's a link in the top pin comment. It's totally free and it's just a nice little switch up community. Well, I say little, there's like 2,000 people on there now. A really good place to talk about games and to get some matches as well. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!